Have you ever wondered how the members of the Reserve Bank Board can so casually inflict the pain of constant interest rate rises on the families of Australia? Well, here's a clue as to why. The members of the board who make these decisions don't feel the pain of their decisions. They're all multi-millionaires, high-flying corporate executives, academics or economists with massive incomes which insulate them from the pain of mortgage payments. Now, it's well known that the Reserve Bank Governor, the dismally untalented Philip Lowe, has a million dollar annual salary, and the last time he borrowed to buy a home, he got a special cut price mortgage deal because he's one of the privileged elite. And whenever I hear him speak about lifting interest rates, I get the strong impression that he doesn't understand or he doesn't care about the impact of these decisions on ordinary individuals and their families across Australia. Recently, I saw a television interview in which Governor Lowe expressed the view that a likely outcome of his decisions to constantly lift our interest rates was that the unemployment rate would increase from around 3.5% to about 4.5%. And he said casually in that interview that this would be a pretty good outcome for Australia. That would mean 120,000 more people would lose their jobs. And if Lowe felt any remorse for those people, he certainly didn't show it. Because Philip Lowe will not be one of those people losing their income in times when everything costs more and rental accommodation is scarce and incredibly expensive. To him, that 120,000 is just a number on a computer screen. They're not people with families to feed or bills to pay. And frankly, I find that disgusting. But Philip Lowe and his cohorts on the Reserve Bank Board don't spend any amount of time at ground level where the pain of their decisions are felt. They sit in a, an ivory tower boardroom a long way from the harsh reality of having to find an extra $1,000 or $1,500 a month to service the mortgage. They include people like Alison Watkins, who until 2021 was the managing director of Coca-Cola Amatil earning an annual package of $5.5 million per year. Watkins is currently a director of CSL, also a director of West Farmers, and is chancellor of the University of Tasmania. She's not struggling to pay her mortgage. The Reserve Bank Board also includes Mark Barnaba, an investment banker who was the founder of Azure Capital and is currently a director of Fortescue Metals, one of the nation's biggest mining companies where he's paid almost a million dollars a year just to attend board meetings. He's not living on Struggle Street either. The Reserve Bank Board also includes Steve Kennedy, a top level public servant who is currently Secretary to the Australian Treasury on a salary of more than $800,000 a year. There's also Carolyn Hewson, a former investment banker who has been a director of some of Australia's biggest companies, including BHP, Westpac, AMP and one of the country's biggest developers, Stockland, and is currently a director of CSL and a director of Infrastructure South Australia. And there's economist Ian Harper, who is the dean of the Melbourne Business School. Now, this is a private club of elite citizens who haven't spent any time recently trying to decide whether to cut back on meals or reduce their kids' sports activities or find ways to reduce power consumption this winter or cut back on the use of the family car because petrol costs so much. They're the high flyers who arrogantly and ignorantly inflict extraordinary financial pain and stress on ordinary Australians. And they're not having any trouble sleeping at night. Now the federal government recently announced a shakeup of the Reserve Bank and the way they make decisions about our interest rates. How are they proposing to improve, improve things with the, the Reserve Bank well, they're going to do it by inflicting another layer of high-flying economists into the decision-making process. And for me, that's just more of the same. More elite number crunchers who have no understanding or empathy for the people whose lives they massively impact. It's time we challenge this whole process of how decisions on interest rates are made and how we deal with the problem of high inflation. The notion that constantly lifting everyone's mortgage rates is the best way, or indeed the only way, to deal with high inflation is archaic and it's nonsensical. 
It's time the federal government took responsibility for the situation and started addressing the individual components of high inflation, like high petrol prices, remembering that when we pay $1.90 per litre to fill up the car, 46 cents of every litre is a tax charged by the federal government. It's time the federal government addressed the high cost of rental accommodation, firstly by understanding that the chronic shortage which is behind the rental increases was caused by the decisions made by politicians, and also addressing the high cost of home construction, again caused by shortages of everything, again caused by poorly considered decisions by politicians. In the meantime, those of us at ground level will have to go on paying more and more on our mortgages because of the decisions made by the elites who live in high-rise boardrooms.